This is our drone project with the AR drone. We decided as a team to try to do search and rescue. So an example of this is in the Palisades of this overview map. We decided we would try to track somebody like this girl, my roommate, Caitlin. Um, and so we'd be going flying over and trying to search for a said person. We were thinking of hooking up infrared onto the top of it. So then it would better um, be able to identify a person between a tree as well as using machine learning um, to identify a person, like a specific person that we were looking for, and then using GPS to locate said person and uh, notify search and rescuers where that person was at. So, um, for example, right here we'd be zooming in and the drone has identified who the person is and flies in and is able to find her. What I personally was able to learn from my portion of the project was uh, my goal was to try to get the drone to be autonomous. However, that wasn't possible um, with the given time frame and certain things. Um, I was able to figure out where inside the drone data itself it um, has all of these files and where it was pulling from. And I was able to learn about servos and I was able to learn about how it all interconnected to each other to learn about how to interact um, with pre-existing software um, on a primarily robotic um, component. My name is Michael Hanks and this is our drone project. One of the goals we set for ourselves um, this semester as we worked on this project was to give our drone, which is outfitted with a camera, the capability of detecting a human face. This needed to be something uh, that we could then program the drone with different responses. For instance, you know, retrace its steps back to HQ with uh, whoever it may be following it, right? It also needed to be able to convey to us, while it was still out there, uh, that it had recognized these facial features, right? That it had sensed something. This part of our project included us learning how to program within a ROS environment. Uh, using a subscriber and publisher notes to receive information from the drone and to display this information on our virtual machines. And the virtual machines what I am uh, screen sharing at this very moment. Uh, a lot of the, the virtual machine, uh, disclaimer, uh, we are following a tutorial. And so we were able, it was a huge kickstart for us in connecting to the drone and being able to set up these ROS nodes. Um, but we did add on a bunch of stuff that we would like to demonstrate to you as well. So that said, as we can see, oh, I was having some troubles with the internet connectivity while trying to get some live interactions with the drone. So instead I got some images, I screen, screen snapped while I was doing this. Uh, starting up the drone, it brings up a live, a live GUI where we see frame by frame um, everything that's happening. So without any facial features in, in sight, this is an example of one might see over on the right hand side. Right hand GUI right here. It's just a, a normal GUI uh, of a video feed. And the bottom left, it says landed. That's showing its status, its flight status. And uh, there's not much else going on here. It's just, just a pretty standard, pretty standard feed. Over on the left hand side is our is is where we have an image. We have a face, mine, haha. Um, and in the bottom left of this GUI, we see its status, it says it's landed, um, and it says facial recognition achieved. The hardest part about this program in and of itself was using deprecated Python libraries inside of ROS. Um, ROS is a little bit of an older uh, setup nowadays, apparently, and so you need to be using older Python, Python 2.7.3, instead of the newer Python 3 versions we have now. So that was the hardest stumbling block we came across. But overall, it was a really educational experience. And uh, in the end, we did get it to work. My name is Matthew, and I wanted to try to answer any potential questions you might have about the project. We were using the robot operating system, abbreviated as ROS. We are using an older version of ROS called ROS Fuerte, which was released back in 2012. The current version of ROS at the making of this video is ROS Noetic, released in 2020. To our understanding, the AR drone only has support in older versions of ROS, 
like ROS Fuerte, this is why we ran into version issues. ROS nodes really aren't much more than an executable file within a ROS package. ROS nodes use a ROS client library to communicate with other nodes. Nodes can publish or subscribe to a topic. Nodes can also provide or use a service. On the left side of the screen is a list of nodes related to the AR drone. It subscribes, or in other words, reads from the CMD underscore Bell topic and publishes or sends data to these topics here. This is the type of data that could be read from the drone to help in the automation process. This is under the AR drone nav data topic, and this data updates in real time when we are connected to the drone. We were hoping to use these nodes and this GPS topic to make the drone completely autonomous in its search and rescue functions, but we ran into version issues as mentioned before. Since the AR drone is subscribed to CMD underscore Vel, publishing messages to that topic will cause the drone to fly as if we were using a controller. On the right is an example of how we publish data to cause the drone to take off or land. While in flight, we can send instructions to the CMD underscore Vel topic, such as these. While for this presentation, I showed you these in the command terminals, but to accomplish our goal, we were sending messages like this pro programmatically in Python and C++. There's a lot more that I wish I could cover, but for now, that concludes our project.